The first round of the King of the Universe tournament is upon us, and it's time for some bloody battles for a grand prize. Thanks to Creative Assembly, we have a Total War Pharaoh press kit to give away. Now, let's look at the armies. As Irsu, we have Vile Urple, a YouTuber you've probably seen some of his Pharaoh vids, there's gonna be a link in the description. And as Tausret, we have the Green Knight. Irsu's army is pretty straightforward, a lot of defensive infantry here, amazing armored skirmishers, shock infantry and chariots, just as you would expect. Tausret is all about the ranged game. She's got superior archers to Irsu, the chariots can be on par, although they're skirmish chariots, and a pretty defensive line of Egyptian axemen and Achaean runners. Irsu basically wants to get in hard and fast, he wants to demolish his opposition before his pitiful range gets shot to death, meanwhile Tausred wants to control the battlefield. She wants to shoot. Her infantry is not bad, they're perfectly tanky, especially these Achaean runners, but some of them just shouldn't compete with Irsu. Now what's gonna happen if they go berserk? I guess we'll find out. We have the Egyptians moving forward to aggressively skirmish. The Canaanites are going into formation, actually, here. They moved out of formation. It should give them a hundred percentage almost shield block once they're in. They don't have the big shields, though. But we're actually looking at the Egyptians being the aggressors. The archers are starting the fire. The Canaanites are just taking it. They have to start moving, and we actually see the aggressive shock infantry. The Sabunajib chargers move around, the chariots are trying to coordinate an attack. The spearmen are in formation now. They have a huge block chance, but it's not 100%. Unfortunately, it's the Luwian, so they're still taking a ton of losses. Valerpal is moving his skirmishers to try to overload a flank. The Sabunajib are gonna charge into the Achaean runners, and this is gonna be bloody. Spear chargers do so much damage, they're just fantastic. The Chariots are fighting here, but they're outnumbered, the Anatolians got a worse charge than the Achaeans. The left flank is looking like it's in Egypt favor, the center is coming. The Hittite skirmishers are under heavy fire, this is a high priority unit that needs to be taken out. Meanwhile, the Asuan Axemen are getting around the flank, the cheap Hupshu are already routing versus the Achaeans, and we actually have the Egyptian Axemen getting into melee range here. The skirmishers might be heavily armored, but nothing a good axe to the face can't fix. Let's take a look at the tactical real quick. The archers are partially engaged in combat, which is gonna disrupt their fighting. The left flank has been decisively won by the Egyptians. Irsu is pushing through the center, the axemen are actually losing, and the archers are completely unthreatened. If Irsu doesn't find a way to take out the Egyptian archers, this might as well be doom for the Canaanites. These armored Hittite skirmishers, as expected, they are not performing as good against the Axemen, but they do have backup. Now we have Irsu himself charging into the fray. It's fantastic, but the chariots are moving around, they're uncontested because of the left flank. The Achaeans are hard winning against the Kupshu, Kupshu are levies after all. Taustrut on a bow is a very interesting choice because she is vulnerable to just getting shot to death or killed by a chariot. Here, against Irsu, she doesn't have to worry about that. We get two beautiful charges by the Achaean chariots into the rear of the Canaanites. This is looking pretty doomed for Irsu. He doesn't really have anything to defend, his backline is melted. One of these Sabunajib was AFK in the woods. This is looking like a decisive win for Tausret. Let's move on to game two. After we analyze the end screen. This was short and sweet, but this is what you expect when you have a pretty rush-heavy army versus Tausred. The Hoopshu didn't really do amazing. The Chargers got some nice stuff on, but they were just outnumbered on the flanks. The Luvians, you do not ever expect them to get any good gold value. The Axemen managed to get around the flank and the Javs did get some value, but it wasn't decisive enough. The Egyptian infantry performed monstrously, and especially the archers. They were unthreatened, so they just had free reign the whole game. The chariots, also being supported by the peasants, really did help them out. On to game two. I can see my house from here in Babylon, and I guess we're pretty roleplay friendly. We actually have Valerpul playing Babylon here against the Sheridan. So the Babylonian army is pretty interesting. Babylon wants to rely on a lot of Silulu, a lot of cheap unit spam, they've got amazing archers, some Akkadian cavalry, and here's the real kicker. 
The Acadian Axemen are monstrously tanky heavy infantry. These guys can really take a punch and also give two back. On the Sheridan side, we've got a very cheeky aggressive deployment by the Sheridan ambushers just getting ready to catch something. Caskian Chargers, excellent Spear Chargers, a lot of Chaff Infantry, we've got Sheridan Axemen, fantastic for breaking through armor and shock tactics, and at the back we've got Yuleos and Sheridan Hunters. Right off the bat, we can see the Sheridan Ambushers just decimating some Acadian Farmers. Not the best use of ammo, but they can't really pick their target right now. They're actually about to get charged by the Farmers. They're trying to disengage, but the Farmers might actually catch them with Charge Acceleration. Especially if they hit water now. Oh yeah, they're getting really close to a charge. There's more Javelins coming in from the other Ambusher unit. You don't really want to be wasting too much ammunition on such a cheap unit, but the Green Knight recognizes this and he's switching fire to the Silulu Spears. Cheap, but hey, at least you're taking out Shock Infantry. The armored Silulu Spears are getting into formation. They'll be extremely durable. Just a pain to remove. But the shirt in the left flank here is trying to wrap around. We got Nurage Axe Wielders. A pretty cool unit. They got a nice little charge here on the side. Not all models connected. The Silulu are countercharging. This might actually be a really nasty flank overload. On the left side, we've got a pretty good matchup here. The Acadian farmers are just demolishing the Anatolian militia on the charge. The Babylonian archers, they kill anything they can hit. If Wilerpool goes on the shirt and hunters, it might actually be pretty bad for Babylon. Meanwhile, the Silulu Spears in formation will easily be able to outtank the Sheridan Levy. But the Babylonian left flank, it completely collapsed. There's actually a high chance the archers might get caught here. But if Ilerpil gets his cavalry into the rear, the spearmen are protecting here, so he can't really charge them or it's game over, but the cavalry is about to connect with an archer unit. They stop at least? They're not exactly going for it. Ah, this one gets double teamed! This is actually a really nice play. This is just gonna annihilate this unit of Sheridan Hunters. Meanwhile, Yolaos is chilling with Acadian Axemen. He's winning, and because of the scare ability, they might actually route their morale is dangerously close. The Sheridan unit's actually connected to the backline. Even though these Babylonians are better in close combat, they still didn't get the charge off. But here's where it's gonna get nasty. The Babylonians are perfectly fine in the center. The archers are demolishing the Sheridan archers. But we have Sheridan Warband here. The cavalry is gonna charge into them. It doesn't really do much damage. It doesn't have that capability. These guys got blocked basically by the cavalry from flanking. If they get a flank here, it's game over for Babylon, I feel. The entirety of the Sheridan, basically their right flank, it's perfectly healthy. These Sheridan recruits are gonna take out the Siraku archers, which is a shame, but they're getting shot perfectly by the Babylonian archers, which are in direct mode. But here the Sheridan are actually going around the flank. This is not gonna look good for the Babylonians, the Nurage get a fantastic rear charge. This is a pretty bad day to be a slave in Babylon. Then again, I feel all days are like that. The Green Knight is using Flaming Shot here, or Sulfur Arrows in the Sheridan case, trying to rout the enemy's units with Fear Breaking. The Warband get a decisive charge. These archers are not gonna know what hit them once they connect. Yeah, there we go, Slaughter is happening, Foliage is burning. The Babylonian army is not looking the best, although the center is holding perfectly fine. Some of the warriors are coming back. The peasants are about to get like a pretty nice charge. The farmers are going into Yoleos. They actually do a ton of damage here right off of the charge. On the right side, the Babylonians are still somehow holding out. They're copying their... attention here? Oh no, no, this is not good. The Shirt and Warband are about to connect into the archers. That's another unit of archers gone. That is Babylon's win condition here, essentially. The center with the Akkadian Axemen is flawlessly holding out, though, despite getting flanked. They still have a massive number advantage. The Shredden Archers are not really doing that much damage while the Sulfur Shot is active, but they are breaking them. That's their mission. They want to make them rout. 
And these armored Lulu are off the field, and so is Adad. The Acadian Axemen are about to rout as well. Everything is burning around the shirt and just don't care. Let's zoom in, just look at this. There's blood in the water. This guy's fighting without his head. Everything is burning. I guess this really is the apocalypse. The dark times are upon us. And it does look like the Shurden are going to be taking this game as well. Let's move on to the breakdown. The Babylonians put up a valiant fight, but it wasn't enough. The spearmen did their job of holding. Some of them were overlapped, though. Some of the archers got fantastic value. If they were protected a bit better, this might have gone the other way, actually. Pretty decent kills in the farmers. The Acadians got routed. The cavalry did manage to eliminate some archers, though. The warband did fantastic. A lot of them got into the archers. The Nuragi axe wielders and the warband were absolute monsters. Javs got their value and pretty creative way of trying to break the enemy's morale. That's what the Shurden are all about. Anyway, these two games are just the beginning of this tournament series. There's gonna be a lot more coming, so stay tuned, and until the next time...